Well, good day, viewers. And today is June 2nd, Sunday. Amazing how time goes. June 2nd already. And today is the Sunday Fireside Afternoon Chat. And I think you can see that we have the fire going today. It's a, a damp, dreary, dark, dingy, nasty, wet day. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. And yesterday wasn't that much better in the afternoon. It wasn't quite so bad in the morning. Not, not very nice, but the afternoon was cold. Holy cats, the wind from the north was blowing. And nasty, nasty weather. Oh, I forgot. I forgot my notes, of course. Pretty bad. I should write a note down to not to forget the notes, I guess. There we go. Well, not a great deal going on this week. I didn't do a, a whole lot of videoing, I guess. Just my main thing this week was grass cutting. I just uh, the grass, everything, the trees, the grass, everything is grown just leaps and bounds. Which is a good thing. And uh, so, of course, over at my son's, I cut grass at my son's two days. I cut grass at home here two days. And well, by the time you get the mowers ready and you get the grass cut and get them back in in their place, you know, it takes up quite a bit of time. So I didn't get much else done. Um, no, not a whole lot, I guess. I sure would like to get to my wood cutting, and I, <laughs> I've been saying this for however months, I guess, but I might get to do, or I might have a day or two this week that I could do some wood cutting without having to cut grass. Uh, it just seems uh, once I cut the grass over at my son's place, I'm pretty well done in. I really can't get at the wood cutting because I'm done in. So, it's nice to have a day or two without the grass cutting, and then you could maybe do something else. Then there's other things over there to do yet, too. I kind of got some things fixed up around the house here. I still got lots to do, but. There were some things on my mind that I wanted to do, like to raise my uh, mini barn over there, so I got that done. And, and my spruce tree jack, I got that done. And my sand pile thing, I got that done. And a few things like that are, are done, anyway. So, anyway, it is uh, cold today, so I'll take you up to the to the outside, but I'm not going outside, I'm just going to the window. And I'll show you what's outside, and then I'll show you the weather. I'll leave my notes here, so I don't lose them. All right, away we go. Away we go. There's the Nasty Ferguson's. Great looking pair there. So here we are. Is this the, the, the type of day we're having today? It's even kind of windy. Damp, 
sudden just appeared there and I really for two years ago it it's got some different kind of uh, I don't know what you call flowers or something on it but you, you can kind of see if I can get my finger in the camera here somehow yeah there we go see that kind of whoops yeah that kind of a very light green. Stop that. No. Try this. Oh, how about this way? Yeah, a very light green going right across there. Maybe these? That's that tree. I mean, I don't know if you can see the and there's a, with the zoom on, zoom, 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 zoom. And then we have the trunk of it is uh, there's the trunk of it going up. Right there. Anyway, that's where what it is. Anyway, yeah, it, it's kind of like I say, you have that light green there. That's, anyway, it's a different kind of a tree. I have no idea what it is. I've never seen that around here before. I thought maybe that it was a, a popular, but and it might be, but because there was a great big popular there all well, years and years ago. It got cut down, and uh, but it's got really different bloom on it, or the flowers, or something that come out on it that I've never seen before. Anyway, we'll see what happens this year. I kind of really don't want it there in a way. I'd like it for it to be it to be back, stood up more straight. And I was wondering if I could put something around it and go back into some of the other trees and just kind of pull it into the woods a bit. Well, I don't know. I think that would just chafe on the bark and then maybe ruin the thing, I guess. Anyway, it's growing, and that's just the way it is. So, uh, yeah, we'll have a... Oh, look, yeah, it's a kind of like a heavy mist, you know. We'll have a look at the weather here. So we are at 8 degrees Celsius. Isn't that lovely? 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect. North wind at 29 miles an hour. And our high today is supposed to be 12, but I kind of doubt that it's going to get to that. Tomorrow's not looking too bad, 16 and sun and cloud. Tuesday and Wednesday are the ones that I'm thinking that are going to be wood cutting days, maybe. Monday morning is always grocery getting day. So. Uh, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we'll be back to cutting grass again, or maybe Wednesday. But the grass really should be cut every four to five days now. But that's, sometimes that don't happen. 
Thursday, uh, 16, and 16, 16, and uh, Friday and Saturday are looking pretty good, but uh, that can change. Uh, 24 to 25 degrees, sun and cloud. Anyway, we had a couple of nice weeks there the last past couple of weeks. There, it was a nice, nice go of it. And uh, well, we'll get you set down here again, see if we can set you up here without too much mayhem. Okay, so yeah, kind of around there somewhere, I guess. So yeah, like I say, enough, nothing too startling here this week. That's what my my aunt always used to say when I go to visit her. Nothing startling happening. <laughs> anyway, one of her other sayings was, "I don't know how people get along that are wasteful." She always used to say that. <laughs> Yeah, poor, poor woman, she's gone now three or four years, I guess. She was 90 when she passed away. Anyway, so I was out and got my coffee. And there was a tractor or there is a tractor dealership not too far from here, so I went and drove around there and had a look at the tractors, and well, there's not much to look at. Years ago, it was great fun, you know, my, when my son was young, and when, you know, it would be 20 years ago or more now, Sunday mornings was our thing to do, was go drive around, look at, at the car lots, and look at the tractors, and all that stuff, and it was always Something nice to look at, but not anymore. No, no good looking cars anymore. There's no, no older tractors or anything like that too much that are for sale at the tractor lots. They're, it's changed a lot in the last 20 years. Holy cat, the way things are. But you could go to a, there were numerous tractor lots that we used to go to, and I'd say over half of them are, are closed up now. But they always had old tractors for sale, and it was always fun to go and look at them, you know. Internationals, and Massey Ferguson's, and Ford's, and sometimes some cases, and some other tractors, so, you know, the older stuff, 60s, and 70s, and 80s. And, yeah, it was always fun to go and look at. Anyway, you don't see that anymore. They don't seem to have that stuff around their uh, lots. Anyway, that's the way that is, I guess. So what else have we got here? Today, this is today, today, today. So uh, something I started <laughs> there on Friday was Massey Ferguson Friday. Now, I don't know if I'll ever keep doing that or not, because I certainly don't have enough Massey Ferguson, <laughs> I'd need 52 of them. Anyway, I might do that again just for fun. But if I happen to have one of them out doing something. And, uh, <laughs> oh well. Oh, what else have we got here? I say it's pretty, pretty quiet this week. Um, my son and I did go for a drive yesterday. Um, a fellow we know that does roofing, he does steel roofing. And he's in the pretty well everything, old tractors, old cars, old, old, old. So somehow, about a year and a half ago or something, like I'd been looking for a Kohler engine for quite some time. And he and I got talking one day, and he says, well, I got a Kohler engine at home. He says, I think, he says, I think it's a 12 horsepower, and I'm not using it anymore. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, he said. I said, do you want to sell it? He says, well, I don't know. He says, I might. He says. So this went on back and forth the odd time. 
you know, I'd see him maybe once every three to four months or something like that, and we'd have a quick little chat about it or something. Anyway, anyway the other day I seen him up at the, the gas station, and uh, I said to him, do you want to sell that engine? He says, well, he says, why don't you just come and pick it up? I said, all right, so we'll do that. So my son and I went there this went yesterday to pick this thing up. So not knowing everything about this, um, he did mention that it was on some kind of a machine through our conversations. And uh, so anyway, I said, well, yeah, we'll, we'll get it. And I, then when we were going to go down yesterday, I phoned him and I said, do we need to take anything with us for tools or or is the engine just sitting there, or is it on something? Or so then he says, "Well, it's on a whatever it is. You might as well just take the whole thing." And I thought, "Well, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to take the whole thing." But anyway, he's he's offering the, an engine for free. Well, then you you take the whole thing, right? That's that's kind of the payment in a way. So. Uh, Still really not known for sure if it was the type of engine that I wanted, but I knew it was a Kohler engine. So down we go to pick this thing up. So when we get there, of course, he's got old cars and old tractors, and so we had to walk around the place and, and look at all this stuff. And <laughs> I said to my son, geez, we're, we're lucky we ain't got near as much as what he's got here. <laughs> Holy cats, he had an awful lot of stuff. He had an old, I uh, forget now, it was an Austin, Cambridge, I think. 1957, Austin, Cambridge, that he fixed up and he had painted. So that's one thing he was at. He had a Porsche car there, one of them little, like a, uh, was pretty near dragging on the ground when you get into it. It's only two seater. I don't know what to make of it was, but other than it was a Porsche, it had a flat window on the back of it. Engine bonnet, cab, flat window, and trunk. Uh, well, he likes going to car shows, so that's where he was going with that yesterday. There was a car show in town somewhere, I guess. So. <laughs> Anyway, look around all his old stuff, all the cats and stuff he got. Anyway, he had this uh, thing we were going to pick up, loaded onto his tractor loader, and it picked it up out of the grass. And so anyway, he set the thing in the trailer, and then we tied it on, and we had more of a chat, and this and that. So anyway, I'll show you what I got. I don't have a picture of the actual, the actual thing, but I'll show you what it is or what it looks like, and you'll get a kind of an idea of what I'm up to, I guess. So. so anyway, we tried to give the thing away to two different places on the way home, but we couldn't get rid of it. <laughs> it's not something that we want, I guess. So. Um, this one. So it looks like that. It's got three wheels. It's got the identical tires on it, but it's not a John Deere, it's a Jacobson. And I guess it was like a, a sand pit tractor for golf courses, I guess is what it's meant for. Anyway, that's what we dragged home. Now, of course, it's, it's not a John Deere, it's just a Jacobson. And doesn't it's not in that good shape. And it doesn't have a blade or any attachments on it. There's nothing on it for attachments. So anyway, the motor I was looking for was a Kohler. So there's a Kohler motor, and that's the exact a Kohler motor that's on that thing that we dragged home. So it's uh, it wasn't what I was looking for. Let's put it that way. 
it's the next generation after the Kohler K series engines. So this engine is a cast iron engine. And then there's a Magnum 12 and the Magnum 16. And the internals of the 12 and the 16 are basically the same as a, a Kohler K series, so like a, a 301 or a 341 engine. So I guess they just kind of designed the look of it a little different to kind of make it more modern looking or something. I don't know what the idea of it was, but they were still cast iron engines. They still basically had the same parts from the K series to the Magnum series. Anyway, that's what's on the thing and it's not really what I was looking for. And we turned it over yesterday there and it's got no compression. So anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I may take the motor off of it and maybe the transmission out of it. It's a three-speed forward with a reverse transmission. It kind of looks like a transmission that might be, that might fit in that tractor. Might, but I kind of doubt it, but it might. But what it might fit in is an early uh, Ford tractor that size because it was made by Jacobson, the Ford tractor. So they might have used that same transmission that's in that three-wheel thing in the Ford tractors. I think they were a Ford 75 or something like that. Uh, and it would be late 60s, early 70s, 70, 71. So anyway, that's what I think I'm going to do. I'll take the motor off of it and take the uh, transmission out of it and the rest of it will be going to the, to the garbage. Tires are all rotten and you know, there's nothing on it that's really any good other than... And the transmission and the motor may not be any good either. But it might just be... The motor might be a, a winter thing for something to do to see if I can get it going. Anyway, that's what we were up to yesterday. Now, the other thing that we were doing yesterday, we kind of got rid of two things at the same drive. I'll we'll set this back down here. I had borrowed a tool from a buddy of mine down that way. And uh, it hooks on to my garden tractor, uh, the one I call Grunt. Uh, it's a Ford LGT100 tractor, garden tractor. And somebody had made uh, made up a thing to fit onto the sleeve hitch of any garden tractor that has a, a sleeve hitch. So it would fit on any tractor, basically. And what it was was it was a pair of uh, horse drawn potato hillers. They're a long, long sloping plow like this so that you could hill potatoes with them. Drag all the dirt in and drag it up on top of the, the hill of the potatoes. And it was a great thing for making roads in the garden. And it worked really good for doing the potatoes. But since I don't do potatoes anymore, I'm done with that. So I borrowed this tool from this fellow probably four or five years ago. And, uh, just, and every time I saw him, I said, you know, it's, it's coming back to you whenever, you know, whenever we're done with it, it'll come back. And I said, if I die, my son knows where you live, and I've already told him to take it back to you. So there's no, no goings on that way. It's, he gets back. So anyway, he, uh, or we took it to back to him there yesterday. I said, well, we're going that way, we'll might as well take that piece with us. So we dropped into his place and dropped this thing back to him. He's into garden tractors too. He likes uh, pulling garden tractors like uh, like the antique tractors. So he's got different garden tractors that he fixes up to, to pull with. 
And then I've gotten a couple of things <clears throat> from them over the years, other than for, for the tractors. And I gave him an engine one time that he was looking for, and, you know, just kind of trading back and forth. So anyway, he, he was all excited to show us his new project. So he's building a four-wheel drive articulating garden tractor. So it basically would be the size of my garden tractors here, or maybe a little bit longer, and <clears throat> maybe just a, a touch higher. But uh, he's building all this on his own. He just stopped this up himself and started building it. <laughs> <clears throat> so my son and I said to each other, said, holy cats, we'd never... We'd never think of doing something like that. <laughs> anyway, he's got her, got her pretty well done. And what he's using is he's got two transaxle, hydro, transaxle, rear end combination things that are out of a, a Ford 125, 145, or 165. All, all those tractors use the same hydrostatic rear end. So he's got two of those mounted in this tractor. And he's got it all hooked up so that it drives the front and the back. He's got it so it pivots, turns like this. He's got it so that the front will pivot one way and the pivot in the back on the other one so it will go over the ground. He's got an 18 horsepower three-cylinder diesel motor in it. And... Uh, He's hoping to have it done by August 1st. Now, he's been at this for a year, apparently. And he did say that it took, <laughs> he didn't think it was going to take near this long to make it. So he's been, he's, been, he's well behind and he's, he needs to have it running for August 1st. He even had a business, I think, from the Brunswick uh, approach him to see if they could sponsor him. <laughs> so he's going to put it in the pools, I guess. So anyway, so anyway, he's quite a machine. Oh, well, he's a he's a smart cat, that fellow. So that's what we were up to yesterday. It's, I should have got a picture of that too, but anyway, you might see it someday. Once it's done, and and uh, there's tractor pulls in Crapo in uh, August first, in around that area. Maybe maybe the last weekend in July. Anyway, there's there's tractor pulls then, and then at the Dundas plow match where I go and plow with my Ferguson tractor, there's a lawn tractor or garden tractor pulls there that weekend too. So he's going to have it there also, apparently, in the pulls. And I said, you should put it in the in the parade on Saturday morning. He's, there's always a parade there, so all the tractors and whatever gets all lined up and go for a parade. And he said, well, you could drive it in the parade. <laughs> I said, jump it. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd do that or not, but. I got my own stuff to put in the parade, so. <laughs> anyway, it was kind of a neat thing. Holy cats, he's done some job. And the paint job he did on the frame. Well, you'd think he took it to the body shop to get it done. And I, as I said to him, I said, holy cats, you made some job of a, a paint job on her. And he said, yeah, it's just a spray can, he said. Well, yeah, that's pretty good. That just looked like a factory job. Smooth, shiny, oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that was quite a good, we spent probably an hour and a half there to chat with him. So he's got all kinds of old garden tractors. He's into the Ford tractors like I am. And uh, so anyway, we came back to town and we, we took this three-wheel thing off the, off the, uh, Trailer. Oh, yeah, and, and we did try to give this to him because I knew we really didn't want it. 
He was almost thinking about it, I thought. <laughs> he wouldn't take it. Well, I guess you stopped going. Holy cats, we were up to the 30-minute mark already, and I never even said nothing. Too much. All right, so we'll get back looking at our list here. I don't know. We haven't got a whole lot left in it. Yeah, so well, we got the weather done, the grass cutting chat, and this engine thing, and took back the tool, and I see Ferguson Friday. Yeah. All right, well, we're almost done anyway. So there's uh, the Sunday afternoon chat. Not too much going on. Yeah, that gets you up in there. Well, this magnet thing's got quite a grip on it. So we'll do a little bit on the, on this here. There we are with all the stickers. So uh, Luke, Luke is out doing what was Luke doing? Luke, orange is my new green. I think he was out. Hauling things around the yard there, doing uh, what do you call them things? Them spike things you take the plugs out of the grass and uh, he was spreading fertilizer and grass seed. And he had a fence gate that he was going over, leveling things out. And uh, the difference, he had two pictures there, the May 2nd to May 28th. Holy cats, the difference in the grass was unbelievable within the month. Yeah, whole thing. And what else? Murphy Mowers, he was uh, putting a new drain in, so it was water from, that comes off of his drain from the house, I guess, is going down where he didn't want it to, and he, he uh, made a new route for that. And he's got a nice little tractor there with a loader, that, a garden tractor, and he was able to dig out where he wanted to go with it and keep things moving the way he wanted. I haven't seen anything from Len in this week, no. And Garden Tractor Boy, I didn't see anything from him, but we kind of know he's busy with his studies. And in the backyard with Dale. Boulder Bob. Garden Tractor Boy again, and uh, Mr. Gary. Open Air Adventure with Kenny. I think he had a video there I don't know, this week, or was it this week or last week? Anyway, he was, they were sawing up wood, him and Winston, and uh, couldn't figure out why the steel chainsaw was uh, so much harder on gas than the husky chainsaw. If you go and watch that video, I think you might might figure that out. Then we have Dave RCAF Polar Express. He got his valve back for his backhoe. And he's got that back installed on the tractor and everything seems to be working good. Maintenance with Mike is still at his front front of the house job there. It was putting in a new new sidewalk, I guess I'd call it. I don't know what he's calling it. Anyway, he's been doing quite a job on her. And uh, Brock at Lewis Mowers and Boats was uh, bought a F-150 truck, and uh, there was things mounted in the roof of the truck that was leaking. I guess so. I don't know. One was uh, it was a GPS thing. I guess that's on the roof, and then the dome light on the back of the cab they were leaking, so they took that apart glued them up so they wouldn't leak. And oh, and I already had another a gravely small engine repair. Grave, uh, I already had another uh, video on his dismantle of the 57 gravely tractor. And uh, Craig at Everyday Projects has, did a great video on repairing the brake stick and brake caliber. And we have Rick, Twin Buck Acres. And next to 
Rick is next to the other Rick. Is this fellow here in the center? Yeah, we just don't know about that one. Uh, Rick and Donita are still splitting wood with their uh, new uh, wood footer. And retired for life. And outdoors in the 608. Amanda and Jeremiah were out on the video there this morning. I watched splitting up cherry wood. And uh, we're kind of mentioning about the ants and the uh, rock in it. And that's just typical for cherry wood. They, they are in Wisconsin, USA, and I'd say the cherry wood there must be the same as what's here, because that's the way the cherry wood goes here. The ants get up into the bottom of it and uh, rot it out, and then the down goes the tree. So. And the white birch is the same way. Uh, Tucker and I out and about. And then we have Brian and Holly at Cod Raven. He's got himself a new mini excavator there doing some work. And Big Sons, I'm sure he's cutting grass and eating donuts. And these people are very busy. <laughs> very, very busy. Allen Family Firewood. Very busy people. Oh, and uh, Jeff, the video out this morning, just got back from his uh, trip when he went out west in Canada and down to Ohio. Just got back, I guess. So, Darren Wells, different stuff. I didn't get to see that video yet. Larry Cluck. Ross on the land was out with his to return mower cutting grass. There's Club, Club Dora. And John at the Bradley's on Catbird Hill. And then we have father and son outdoors. Now John had a uh, video this week. Oh boy. No, well, I'm sorry, John. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, so last but certainly not least, uh, Grampy's workshop. Uh, didn't see any video there on Friday from Grampy. So hopefully everything is all right with Nanny. All right, that's going to be it for now. Uh, have a great day wherever you're at and wherever you're going. Goodbye.